love movies and movie discussions, you've come to the right place. Who am I, you ask? I am the Wiz, and I'm here today to review the 1965 Shakespearean adaptation, Chimes at Midnight, starring Keith Baxter, John Gilgood, and Orson Welles, directed by Orson Welles. Before we do that, let's get into the plot. The plot starts with Henry IV, who, has, who is played by John Gilgood. He has usurped the throne of England, thus starting the War of the Roses. Meanwhile, he tries to quell the rebellion led by Northumberland Scion Hotspur, played by Norman Rodway. While that's going on, Henry IV's heir, Prince Hal, who is played by Keith Baxter, leads a life of pretty much debauchery and mischief, causing all sorts of problems and laying all sorts of women. Now, Hal must choose if he wants to redeem his title, which may mean shunning his low-class friends that he's made along the way, including his rotund good friend, John Falstaff, played by Orson Welles. All right, well, that is the plot. Let's get into my three points. And my first point is, this is an entertaining, at times funny story. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I do enjoy watching films that are based on Shakespearean plays, even if they have the original dialogue intact in those movies. But I'm not really knowledgeable in Shakespearean plays, to be absolutely honest with you. When I was watching this movie, I was expecting this to be a very serious, very heady film. And what I was surprised to learn is that this is actually a pretty funny film at times as well. Orson Welles plays a large man who is a womanizer and a drunkard. And a lot of the comedy is based off that fact as well. And the fact that Hal has such affection and very much likes Falstaff as well. And when these two people are together and their scenes are based around either one of those characters, it's a very funny and entertaining movie. But this is going to get to my second point, which is the film is entertaining and at times funny, but only when Prince Hal and Falstaff are involved. When it goes into the deeper machinations of the plot, when it goes into Henry IV, when it gets into the War of the Roses, when it gets into the political nature of what's going on in the rest of the movie, it's not as interesting, it's not as entertaining. With the exception of maybe a fight scene, which does involve Prince Hal, the film gets a little bit boring, which is, is really a shame in my mind because some of the best characters that I really like from Shakespeare plays are supporting characters. Let's look at Mercutio from Romeo and Juliet or Rosencrantz and Guildenstern in Hamlet. In Chimes at Midnight, which I believe is a, a mashup of Henry IV parts one and two, Henry V, and the book that I'm not sure what the book is. None of the other characters are all that interesting in this movie, which I find to be kind of a disappointment because that's what I really like about Shakespearean plays. A lot of the characters are actually really good, but in this movie, that's really not the case, which I find to be pretty disappointing. And let's get into my third point. And my third point is that the sound design is just bad in this movie. I gotta tell you, this is the second movie that I have watched that is in, in the English language that I've had to watch with subtitles. And the reason why is because sound design is so bad that you will miss bits of dialogue in the film because the sound design just doesn't pick it up. Or that it sounds like or Orson Welles specifically is mumbling and you can't understand what he is saying in certain points. It's almost like they want you to actually have the text of the play that this is from and read along with it so you can understand what he's saying. It is so bad, okay? I watched this through HBO Max. It is so bad that when I turned on the subtitles, something I don't normally do with a English language film. I did it once with Kess, and I only did that with Kess because the dialect was so strong and the way that they talked was so distinct that I couldn't understand them, so I had to use English subtitles. But in this movie, the only reason why I use English subtitles in this movie it's because there were points where I couldn't understand what was being said. And it wasn't because of their dialect or or the accent that they were using in this movie. It's because they didn't pick up the noise. And the dubbing as well in this movie is pretty bad. There are scenes in this film where they had to dub over what the people were saying. And even the subtitles can't pick it up because there are times where I'm watching the film and I'm reading the subtitles and it says unintelligible or basically says we, we can't I, we don't know what this says and that's bad <laughs> especially for a Shakespearean play where the dialogue is so important and that's what makes Shakespeare's plays so good is that the dialogue is really good and when you can't understand what they're saying it gets really annoying to, to watch at times I want to point this out and I usually don't when it comes to my three points but I have to in this movie if you are going to watch it do yourself a favor and just put on subtitles 
because you are going to fiddle with the volume throughout the entire film going to be too loud at some point you're going to turn it down and then you can't hear the dialogue and you're turn it back up and then something loud is going to happen and you have to turn it back down again just do yourself a favor just go ahead and just put the subtitles on i honestly i think you're going to be better off on that okay so here are the footnotes for chimes at midnight and it's just a thing i thought about when i was watching this movie is that i think schools teach shakespeare pretty wrong let me just put my two cents on how i learned shakespeare in high school and basically what the english teacher would do is they would have a specific play i, I believe it was romeo and juliet I, i'm fairly certain that's what it was and they would have you read the dialogue and have it read out loud and then maybe the english teacher would insert some commentary here and there and tell you exactly what it is that is being done in the scene i gotta be honest with you uh, in high school i was about as bored by Shakespeare as I think everyone else was. And I understand why now. Uh, when watching the film and watching the actors perform it well and do the dialogue the way it's meant to be done and as performative as it was, to me, that's easy to understand. Even with the way the dialogue is and it's old English and it's in, the, in that Shakespearean style. Even I watch it goes, oh, I can understand this pretty clearly. But I do understand why people will hear someone say, oh, I'm going to watch a Shakespearean movie, and they're like, no, thank you. Because they had that memory of high school where they did that, and they couldn't understand a damn thing that was going on because you don't have the context of how it actually is performed. And honestly, I'm right there with them. Like, it wasn't until I started watching movies based on Shakespearean plays where I started realizing, oh, this is actually pretty damn good. This is actually really good, actually. I'm surprised. I think after high school, I watched Othello. And that's only because... I watched O, oh, which was the remake of Othello, and I really liked that. And then when I read it's based off of Othello, I was like, all right, why not? And I watched it. I was like, this is actually really good. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. And I think schools, instead of having students read the dialogue, because you know what it was like in high school. Instead of like, uh, thus dart thou Romeo. And like, they don't have any flourish with it. Because they just want to get it over with. They don't want to embarrass themselves in front of the students. They just read the dialogue as is like this, and I don't blame them in that end. So what they really should do, have them read a certain passage. Okay, so after we're done reading, we're going to watch it on the screen right here. This is the play done by the Shakespearean Theater, or do a movie if you really want to. I know some English teachers hate that. We're going to watch the scene that you just read, and then give me your thoughts on it. And then go from there and then add a little commentary here and there about why it's written this way or how it's why it's performed that way and just do it that way instead of just having them read the dialogue as is because i think the way that the actors perform it and how it's done professionally makes it a lot easier to understand Overall, I do recommend Chimes at Midnight. I like the film. I think it's entertaining, and I think it's entertaining when Prince Hal and Falstaff are involved in the film. But because that's the only two characters that are really that interesting, and the rest of them don't really have that much depth into it, it's not one of my favorites when it comes to films based on Shakespearean adaptations. In this movie, I can see why I think people would like this movie and probably would like Henry IV, Part One and Two, and Henry V. But the way that the film is done, the film is set around Falstaff and Prince Hal. But because of the way it is, the other characters get much less time, which makes them much less interesting. Overall, I am going to recommend Chimes at Midnight. I think it's a curious film if you're into Shakespearean adaptations. Not one of my favorites, but it's definitely good. So overall, I recommend Chimes at Midnight. Now, if you want my full review on this movie, you can go to my website at, at IamTheWiz.com. You'll have my full written review right on the site, along with a link to the video that has this review that you've just listened to. Thank you for listening to this review. If you want to know what we're reviewing in the next couple days, you can look on the screen right now to see what's coming up next. If you like what you heard, go ahead and leave a like on this video. If you want to discuss your opinion on the film or the review itself, please leave a comment. And if you want to hear more, subscribe to the channel. Thank you again for listening. I will talk to you next time.